Hey there, I'm Maureen, and I want to tell you about the spooky experience I had last Christmas. Let me start by asking, do you believe in curses? I bet most of you don't. I never did. Well, I certainly didn't until we got a cursed painting hung on our wall. How did I discover that it was cursed? It's quite a frightening story, but I'll tell you. When my grandparents came and brought us a gift, a crazy looking painting, it was huge. It had Santa and some reindeer and a big golden frame. The frame was painted wood with a very unique design to it with all these swirls, just like you'd see at an art museum. When my father hung it over the dining table, I got a weird chill. I almost immediately knew something was wrong. When you look at it, you realize that Santa and his reindeer have blood red eyes. Not black like on the first glance. And their eyes would follow you wherever you moved in the room. As if it was alive. Obviously, I thought I was imagining things, so I shrugged it off. Then, after Christmas, something very odd started to happen. Something that I would never expect in a million years. My mom got into an argument with my dad about money. And they shouted at each other for the first time ever. And it kept getting worse in the next few weeks. It wasn't only my parents, though. My sweet little brother would all of a sudden find ways to fight and blame me for anything that was wrong. From chores in the house to cleaning our room, it was just horrible. But it didn't stop there. Money became a major problem, and every time we asked for anything, my mom would literally yell at us that we don't have any money and we should never ask. I even heard her mumble once that my brother and I were like two little parasites sucking the life out of her. I couldn't believe it. It made me so sad to hear it that I cried myself to sleep. One night, my father was so furious that he slammed the table during dinner and looked at us so mad that my mom told us to go to our rooms right away. We heard them shouting for hours that day. The next day, I decided that I've had enough of this. Something was definitely wrong and I needed to know what it was. As I was thinking, I felt that awkward feeling I always used to get around that stupid painting our grandparents got us. When I looked up, I could see Santa's eyes gazing at me in the most frightening way. This painting has brought us all the bad luck in the world and I hit that painting with my fist in anger. I hate you, I screamed. When suddenly, I heard a loud noise of glass being shattered. When I looked behind me, I saw the crystal candle holders that was just laying on the table, on the floor, shattered into thousands of pieces. I froze in my place, unable to move. Oh God, something is seriously wrong with that painting. I hurried up to my room and started researching online. I found that some objects, like paintings, may have dark origins and that misguided spirits would sometimes embed themselves into them. They would cause misery to anyone around them, and I thought, that is exactly what is happening. My research led me to an old bookstore in town where they specialize in the supernatural. It was so weird, I had to take my friend Shelly with me, but right before we entered, she said she would wait for me outside. I thought about it. Can this all be possible? This must be some type of trick. But then I remembered that my dear father was actually about to hurt us last night. He would have never done anything like that ever. I went inside with a mission to find out how to remove this curse. The old lady at the store greeted me and she said she knew I would come in today. That's odd, I thought, but I was focused. So I told her the story and she nodded. She asked me to wait and brought a dusty book from the back of the store. She said that my solution will be in there. I already thought this was too much, but then the price of the book was exactly all the money I saved over the past few years from allowances and babysitting. I was planning to buy myself a nice dress for the school dance, so I told her that it's too much and went outside. That night, when I came home, my parents were at it again, shouting at the top of their lungs, no longer hiding their arguments from us. This time, it wasn't just about money. My father was accusing my mom of cheating on him, out of the blue. It felt like they fought forever. I took my dinner plate and went to my room. I was so sad and so 
mad. But then I remember the old lady from the store saying, this is what you'll need to solve all your problems. She also mentioned that it would take great sacrifice. That night, I dreamt about the old lady and what she said over and over. A few days later, right after school, I told Shelly that I need her help and that I will owe her for life. I went to the store and entered it. I was ready to give the old lady all the money I saved. I just didn't care anymore. I read the book right away, and in the chapter about how to get rid of curses, it clearly said that I need to take the object, get it blessed with holy water, and then destroy it, preferably by burning. When I got home, we all sat down to dinner, and before we started arguing and fighting, I asked both of my parents if I could speak with them about something very important. They agreed, asking, what's wrong, honey? I told them that this family is wrong, that something is wrong with us ever since Christmas, and that since that painting is on our wall, we never stop arguing and being angry. They dismissed it as nonsense, but I insisted that before, we were happy. We were grateful for what we had. They told me that I'm imagining things, and that there was no such thing as a curse, and that's how life is. Adults fight sometimes. It doesn't mean that we don't love you and your brother, and that maybe I was just not remembering things clearly as we were always like this. The next day, I called Shelly and told her that we have a quest to save my family. I told her the plan and she agreed to help me. She said it was exciting and that it's the only way. We went to the local church. Shelly distracted the attending priest with some questions and I took a little water from the baptismal fonts basin. I curtsied and went outside to wait for Shelly and she came a few minutes later. We told my mom we were going to study in my room and that later we're going to a campfire with our friends. She waved at us and continued working in the kitchen. That night, Shelly and I went to the dining room, moved the table, brought the ladder and took off the painting all very quietly. We snuck it outside and carried it to the campsite near our home. There was a fire pit dug for campfires, so it was perfect. We brought a few dead tree branches and created a fire teepee around the painting. Then we followed the instructions in the book. We first sprayed the holy water, then uttered the ritual words, asking the spirits trapped in the painting to let go, freeing them to move on to the next world. It was scary and exciting. The fire started and a weird rainbow of colors came out of the painting, but quickly after, they subdued, and the fire burned the canvas and frame until there was nothing left. I swear I saw Santa's image screaming in agony. I snuck back home through the back door that I left unlocked using a piece of tape. I threw all my clothes in the washing machine as I agreed with my mom before we left for the campfire, took a quick shower, and went to bed. The next day, I woke up to noises from the living room. It was weird as usually during the weekend, everyone sleeps in, takes their time. But today, I heard talking and furniture moving. My parents were not in their rooms when I checked and I saw my brother in the hallway just waking up, also confused from all the noise. When we went to the living room, my parents told us we were robbed. They were shocked. They were looking in all the drawers and moving around the house like crazy people. I asked if something was wrong and they said that we were robbed and the robbers came only for our precious Santa painting and that nothing else was missing. They said that they would need to call the police and report this. My brother started crying. My parents hugged both of us and said it's going to be okay and that we shouldn't worry. My mouth was dry. I got really scared but decided not to say anything. The police came and the sergeant said that there was a wave of art thefts in the area and that there's not much to go on. The gang is very professional and they leave no trace behind. They wrote the report and gave the slip to my dad, then said not to get our hopes up and that they would let us know if there was any development in the case. I was finally able to breathe again. My mother was weeping, not knowing what to do. We all hugged for the longest time. My parents kept saying that at least no one was hurt over and over again. In the next few weeks, my entire family slowly got back to normal. We were talking and happy. My mother prepared us sandwiches again and kissed my dad goodbye again. They stopped arguing and shouting. At our family dinners, we returned to share funny stories of the day. We laughed and were so very happy. I went back to the old lady from the shop and returned the book. 
I thanked her and she gave me some of the money back for the book. She said, now you can buy your dress. I wondered how she knew, even though I never told her about it, but I didn't think too much about it because I was so very happy. I don't know if it was really a curse or just a coincidence, but I was more than glad it's over. Did you ever have a supernatural encounter or a curse? Finally, the doctor started letting people go. I was surprised to see almost everyone leaving the plane, one by one. My friends were happy, telling me it couldn't be so serious if they were letting people off, and that I was going to be fine. I felt relieved for a moment, until a doctor came up to me specifically and said that I needed to stay. I was going to ask what was going on, but my friend beat me to it. She quickly asked the doctor if I was going to be okay. But all the doctor said was, don't worry, and then told my friends to get off the plane now. They kept looking back at me with worried looks in their eyes as the doctors ushered them up the aisle. And then I was all by myself, and I felt petrified. I waited for what seemed like forever until they said I could get off the plane. Once on the ground, I was directed to an ambulance. I was shaking, maybe from the illness, or maybe from the fear. Inside, two doctors were really busy. They checked my blood pressure again, and took my temperature, and started taking little bottles of medications out of a cupboard. They weren't really talking to me, and I was too scared to ask what was wrong with me. Finally, I heard my voice asking the female doctor, Am I going to die? She looked up at me and laughed and told me all I had was a cold. A cold? All that worry over a common cold? Most of the people who had gotten sick had been at the festival where the sickness could spread easily. We coincidentally had all started showing symptoms at the same time. And a lot of other people who said they felt sick weren't really sick at all. They were just scared and thought they had caught it. I was amazed, but also really relieved to learn that I wasn't going to die. My friends were waiting for me and they hugged me when I came out. They laughed and said they had also been worried that I was going to die and that they were just glad to still have me around. When I saw my mom waiting for me at the airport, I ran and hugged her so tightly. She was so happy I was okay. I wasn't actually that sick, but the experience made me realize how precious my life is and how unexpectedly it can end. It happened a year ago, but I'm still grateful for every single day that I get to wake up healthy and alive. It's crazy that I spent that flight thinking I might not be here right now. Have you ever had a crazy traveling experience that you would like to share with us? If you do, 